about the topic of Comedre. I want to begin by quoting the Arizal. The Arizal tells us that there are four times in the Jewish calendar when a Kodesh Baruch Hu takes us from zero to a hundred unnaturally with the minimum of effort. One of them is Seder night. The second one is Shavuos morning during the time when we, lead, we read the Ten Commandments. The third is Rosh Hashanah during the time when we hear the Shofar. Those are a few hours maximum Seder night, a few minutes Shavuos morning, a few minutes on Rosh Hashanah. But on Yom Kippur, from the moment that Yom Kippur begins to the moment that it ends, those 24 hours are turbocharged with ruchnius potential. It is like, if you can imagine, your favorite shopping mall selling everything 95% off everything under the roof. That is exactly what we have in terms of ruchniot and ruchnius on Yom Kippur. We can reach incredible heights very quickly. And the tone is set with Kol Nidre. Now, I don't know what happens in the Bukharian community, but I imagine it's very similar to why I grew up in the Ashkenazi community. Kol Nidre is a very powerful event. Uh, the mood is very somber. They take out the Sifri Terra. Uh, the senior Rabbonim of the community are involved. It is incredibly powerful. The music is very, very, very moving. But when you ask yourself, what is it really about? So it's just the annulment of vows. It's not even a tefillah, it's not a prayer, it's not a shira, it's not a shevach, we're not quoting chazal, and you can talk in the middle. It's not like you're saying, you're just saying a nusach, you're just saying words that you want a Kodesh Baruch Hu to annul your vows. Actually, the minhag that we have is to say it while it's still during daytime, because you don't convene a bet din, a base din at night. So we take this very seriously. Basically, what we do on the night of Yom Kippur is exactly parallel to what we do on Rosh Hashanah. That, for me, is going to be in a few hours. It's almost um, a time for Selichot at night for me. But what we do at Hatarat Nadarim, Hataras Nadarim, is basically the same thing. You take three Jews and you annul your nails, your vows. It's interesting. I have a safer over here. Uh, that I wrote, uh, we're about to republish it. It's called Rik Shilev, Women in Tefillah, Menachem Nissel. And um, yeah, a bit of free advertising. And uh, my section on seasonal tefillah is what I write. Many women are accustomed to go to shul for Kol Nidre. Next line, women dubbing a home are not accustomed to recite Kol Nidre. So you look at my footnotes and the footnotes seem to be contradictory. And um, why do women go to shul for Kol Nidre? So I bring down from Rav Scheinberg, and the reason is because they want to get um, Hatarat Nadarim, because they're also chayev to annul their Nadarim. Then, the next line, when they're at their home, they don't do it. So Rav Scheinberg says, because Kol Nidre is basically connected to the synagogue, to Shul. So, I don't get this. If it belongs to Shul, so they should go. If it's something that's a technical thing that they have to do because of halacha, they should be doing it. What does it mean? If they're at home, they don't do it. If they're in shul, well, they go to shul to do it because it's something to do with shul. Well, obviously, there's a reason why we start the most holiest, most powerful 24 hours of the year by far, by far, with the Kol Nidre ceremony within seconds. It takes us to that place where we are like angels and we can say, Baruch, Shem, Kavod, Mochoso, like the angels on the top of our lungs. There is a reason why it has to be Kol Nidre. And to do that, I want to ask you a little bit what is so unique and special about the power of a Nader. So if I take something that, um, let's say over here, I take this pen and I say, I don't want to use this pen anymore. I'm going to make a nether, a vow, that I will never, ever benefit from this pen. So what did I do that was such a big deal? I want to quote my Rebbe, the Moshe Shapiro, Sadiq Zichon Levracha. He said a line that is so powerful and so deep and so meaningful. This is what a nader is all about. A nader is that God invested in man the power to take something physical 
and turn it into something spiritual. Out of nowhere, this little plastic pen that costs pennies now has halachic rulings for me. How did that happen? Because of my mouth, because I said words. My mouth created a new reality on the ground. It's something incredible. That God, when he created man, he said that man should be a king. Man should be a powerful king. To quote the Svatemet, the Svasemes, the Ruach Mumalala is the power of speech, is what defines man. When God created man, he gave us a spirit. That spirit in the language of the Targum is a Ruach Mumalala, that power of speech. And the word Neder, says the Svatemet, in the same piece, comes from the word Dira. He brings down over here that man can bring spirituality and land it down here in this world. Listen to the crazy words of the Chida. The Chida says the following thing about Nadarim. He's quoting this Pasuk in Parshish Matos. The Pasuk says, Lo yachel devaro. He may not make his words chulin. Uh, he cannot make them mundane. Everything that comes out of his mouth, he should do. Everything that comes out of his mouth, he should do. Says the Chida, Yaaseh, he should do, is referring to Hashem. You hear this? Hashem is going to follow the mouth of man. God says, you make a neder, I'm going to listen to what you just said. He empowers man to be the king of his walls. That's how powerful man is. The word dibor is where the malchus comes. The word dibor is what gives us power. The word dibor is so powerful that the word dibor comes to the word dabar. A dabar is one of the Hebrew words for meaning kingship, for meaning manhig, for meaning a person that has power over other things. And we know that the stupidest thing that people say, sticks and stones may hurt my, hurt my, stone, hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me. Wrong, wrong. Hurts, words are the most powerful things they can destroy and they can build. On this planet, at the same time, there was a man called the Chafetz Chaim, and from heaven to earth, there was a man called Hitler. Both had the power of the mouth. One used it to destroy the world, and one used it to build the world. Every time I say the Shemona Esrei, I begin with Hashem, Safasai Tiftel, open up my mouth, because with my mouth, I can cure cancer. With my mouth, my mouth I can bring Mashiach. With my mouth, I can, I can stop wars. I can do anything with my mouth. Hashem wanted it to be that way. And now we get to our point over here. And I want you to listen carefully. Rashi brings down in um, the story of, of Boaz, right? The story of Boaz, he brings down in Medrash that Boaz was a big tzaddik, was a holy person. And he used this power of his mouth to make Nidarim so that he would not come to sin with Rut. He says the words, Chai Hashem, Chai Hashem, Sheikh Yadaboka, the word Chai Hashem is a Shavua. Sadikim, like Boaz, says Rashi, do what's called Nidre Zruzin. So there's a very, very good reason why we should do Nidarim. Um, a person has a Yitzhahara, so you create a, a, um, a barrier with your mouth by creating new facts on the ground in Halacha. That is a healthy, good way of using the power of your mouth and making a neder. However, we all know that the rabbis bring down that people have to be very wary before you use your mouth because a lot of problems can come out of the neder. A lot of things, it's a tricky road that you have to take. Actually, it says, I'm bringing down the words of the Gemara in the Darim, that noder ki lubana bama, he's building, so to speak, an altar. If you get it, if you mess it up, you can destroy things. Listen carefully. On Yom Kippur, the world changes. On Yom Kippur, we have a chance to reach the highest of the highest. On Yom Kippur, a man chooses a different path. He does not want to be the king over the physical world with all its dangers and opportunities. He does not want that. He chooses a different path. He wants to transcend and become one with the Kurdish Baruch Hu. He wants to become angelic. He wants to wear white, representing the purity of the higher worlds. In that world, he has to disconnect from his own malchut over this world, his own malchus 
over the physical world, his ability to take his mouth and change the physical world and give it back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We start off Yom Kippur by, so to speak, handing back our mouth back to God. Handing back that which he invests in Adam and Eve and Adam and Chava, the Ruach Lamala, the power of speech that gives us all this insane power. We say, Kodesh Baruch it's yours, we're taking no risks. This is what we do on Yom Kippur when we give everything over to Kodesh Baruch Hu. Ramesh Shapira adds one more point. Uh, he adds a lot of points, but I'm saying it in short. Why is it called Kol Nidre? Why is it called Kol Nidre? The word Kol is numerically, Kaf Lamet is 50. Kol Nidre means I am taking the world of speech, the world of vows, and I am annulling it so I can reach the world of Kol, reach that 50th level. The physical world has 49 levels. The 50th is the world of the angelic. We reach the 50th level temporarily on Shavuot after 49 days of Sefira. We messed up. And then we fixed the sin of the Chet Egel on Yom Kippur, that Yom Kippur when we came out of Egypt, we got the second Luchot. And once again, we reach the 50th level, but in a sustainable way. Yom Kippur is freedom of slaves because it is a Yobel. It is the 50th level that we can reach by ditching our physical, earthly dominion with our mouth over this world and giving it over to the highest of highest so we can become, so to speak, an, an extension of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Says the Talmud Rebbe, it's a beautiful safer. Last year, I got us a present from my son-in-law. The Talmud Rebbe on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, he brings down a beautiful addition to my Rebbe's idea. And he says, look, when we transcend and when we give over a power of mouth, we're doing something else. And listen carefully to what he says. Why is it that it's compared to building a bama? A bama is, so to speak, an altar. Every time that you turn this stupid pen, whatever it may be, okay, food, um, it could be a person, but it can be anything you want. You make a net, you create that spiritual wall with your mouth there is a tremendous danger that you start to think, you know what, maybe I am a king. Maybe I am better than everyone else. The whole world, they can use this pen, I can't, because I have raised myself to this higher level. In his words, Nadarim is very, very, very much dangerous that you could become on a Bama, okay? The word Bama is a double entendre. It means obviously Avodah Zarah, but it also means you place yourself with Gaiva. I'm better than the people around me. That's why when we start off on Yom Kippur, the first thing we do, we get rid of those Nadarim because Kala Yisrael has to be one. You as an individual cannot become one with God, but you as part of the Tzibur can become one with God. The ladies are smart. That's why they realize the Kol Nidre is not just a moment of vows. It is the ability to fuse the Jewish people together, and that is the power of tzibur, the power of community joining together. Ishachad Belevachad, which we failed on that first Shavuos, and we regained on that first Yom Kippur of the Jewish people as a nation. So now I want to finish off with a message to everyone. Not everyone this year has their synagogues. Not everyone's going to Kol Nidre. But we still have the power of tefillah. That we're not giving up. Oh, no. We're using our mouths from the beginning to the end of Yom Kippur nonstop. Vidu, tefillah. We're talking and we're talking, but we're giving everything over to Hashem. And we'll be saying the following words. We'll be saying, Right for a good life, every single Jew. Next time, Sefer Achaim, Baruch V'Shalom, Parnasa, Nizachet V'Nekasev Necha, Anachnu V'chol Amcha Beis Yisrael, V'chol Amcha Beis Yisrael. So we ask Hashem to write for the Book of Life every single Jew. I want you to think for a moment. If Hashem is giving us a wake-up call with Corona, if Hashem is giving up a wake-up call with all the craziness going on in America today, so... Hashem has two choices. Are you listening, Hashem? You have two choices. You can either keep on shaking us up and trying to get us to focus on you, or there's another way. And that is 
answer our tefillah when we ask Hashem, help every Jew to find you. Help every Jew to open their eyes without saras, without sarah, without pain, without sickness, without problems with our family and parnasah. And write everyone for a book of life. Hashem, please listen. Give everyone, life does not just mean to be alive, it means to flourish, to succeed, so that we can serve you, to take away all the tension in our life and all the anxiety from all our problems, so we can focus on doing what you had in mind when you created the world the first time for Adam and Chava, to bring the harmony between the high worlds and the low worlds on Yom Kippur. We declare this for our brothers and sisters. So I'm giving you a challenge, and that is that this Yom Kippur, Focus on those words. Call, call that 50th level, B'nai B'ritzacha. Call, call, B'sefer Chaim B'roch V'shalom, Anachnu V'chol Amcha Beis Yisrael. That every single Jew, and where you are now listening to me, I promise you, within a couple of miles, there's so many Jews that need your blessings, and so many Jews that need to discover God. And in Yom Kippur, the holiness of the day, you can achieve so much if you daven for your fellow Jew with all their problems and with all their tzaraz. I want to conclude 